Hi, online students. So this is for uh, Cheyenne and Zaria and Emma, if you happen to be online too, okay? Um, so it's uh, I'm making this on Sunday night. I'm at home right now, but I made this document in a program that I have for writing music on my computer, and I'm going to post this. But this is where you're going to learn the notes to read the notes in the treble clef and the bass clef. So if you're playing boom whackers, uh, Emma, this still applies. The notes in the treble clef, these are the notes you're playing on the boom whackers. These are the notes you would play with your right hand on the piano. So right hand, C, D, E, F, and G. This is what it looks like in the treble clef. Okay, and I've labeled labeled them, but we're going to start to learn what they actually look like. C is below, so we've got five lines, one, two, three, four, five, and C is below it, and notice it has a little line going through it, and then this is D, dangling D from the line. E is on the first line of the treble clef, the line is going through the, the head of the note. F is in the first space, G is on the second line up. Okay, so we're going to slowly learn to memorize these notes. So that would be C, D, E, F, G. And then over here it comes back down. G, F, E, D, C. Okay, so that's in what we call the treble clef for right hand. The bass clef, following it over here, bass clef. So this is what... C, D, E, F, and G looks like written in the bass clef. Okay, so C is in a space. It's in the second space up. We want to memorize where C is, both in the treble clef and in the bass clef. Notice some of these notes are colored in and some are not. Some have a stick or a stem attached to it and some do not. Okay, that has to do with the rhythm of the note. Is it short? Is it long? But the placement of the note on the staff in the bass clef or the treble clef, that, whether it's in a line or a space and how high or low it is, that tells us what the note is and what to play. The color of the note and whether it has a stem attached tells us how long to play the note for, what rhythm to use. Okay, so C in the bass clef. Don't forget, we're in the bass clef now. There's our bass clef is in the second space from the bottom. And then when we want to go, this is another important point. When we're just moving up a step, one note higher, we go from this, if we're on a space and we want to move one higher, we go up to the line above it. If we're on a line and we want to go higher, we just move up to the space, to the line, to the space, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, we want to memorize, we want to think about two things when we're trying to read notes. If I know my starting note is C, so you want to memorize C, it, the next note, is it higher or lower? Is it a step up? Is it a step down? Am I skipping a note or am I just moving up one higher? If I'm going from the space to the line just above it, I'm just going up one step. So on the piano, if this was middle C, I go down to this C. I get my hand in position, five, four, three, two, one. C, one higher to D, E, F, and G, and I explain some techniques and some practice stuff to work on playing those notes. Okay, so back to here. C, D, E, F, G. G, F, E, D, C. And if, Emma, if you're watching this, you can learn these notes in the bass clef too, and you can just play the same notes with your boom whackers. And they, if you happen to have caps, some of the boom whackers have caps, you can put a cap on it and that drops the note. If not, just play it as you are and it'll sound the same but you'll still be learning to read bass clef and treble clef okay down here we've got a mystery tune which i think once you start playing it you'll figure it out pretty quickly but i have not put in the note names yet now i did that for a reason because that's why this assignment is going to take a little bit longer and when you're looking at it just look at the treble clef to start okay or just look at one hand at a time. You could start with left hand if you want, but 
Say you look through it with the right hand. Okay, so we want to say, okay, well, it's on the first line. We have to do some investigating to figure out what notes we're playing. It's on the very lowest line, the first line of treble clef. Well, you can look up here. So it's not C. C has a little line going through it, but it's not on the first line. Let's go back down again. See how C is right on that first line, the lowest line. So which note? Is it G? Well, no, G is on the second line. F is in the space. It's E. E is on that first line. So we've got an E to start off the song. We've got, now, what would this be? And 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 what would this be? They're all on the same line. And what did I say? If the line, the placement of the note on the treble clef on the staff tells you what note to play. So if this is, looks like the exact same note on the exact same line, then it is because it's not going higher or lower, it's staying where it is. So we've got E, 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 E. Now, the rhythm here, I'll have to um, talk a little bit about rhythm. The quarter note, these ones get one count. So if, if I just kind of tap that rhythm, tap, tap, and then, or ta, 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 Ah, this one gets two counts. So E, 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 an extra clap or an extra snap. E, 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 or E, E, up here though, sorry. E, 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 e. or I could count it out. This is in four, four. So every bar should have four counts in total. One plus one plus this one gets two. So one plus one is two, plus two more is four. One, and then this is B2, three, four. One, two, three, four. And do it again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You might have a guess what song we're about to play. So I'm. I just told you that it starts on E, Okay, now you're gonna, well, uh, look here. Is that the same note? Yes, it's the same note. And then we go, do we go higher or lower? We do go higher, right? Think of this as a ladder, just going up the ladder. Are we going up to F? From Because E after E is F, right? Is it an F or is it a G? Well, we're notice we're skipping the space. We're going from a line to a line, so we've skipped a note. F would be in the space. So I'm not going to tell you what note that is. What note would that be? E, we're skipping F, and we're going to this note. And then we drop all the way down, and then we step up one, and then we step up again to E, because we've named E. Hopefully we can recognize it. And then from, okay, so that's the first four bars. One, two, three, four. So you you might so you're gonna go down you're gonna go through it bar by bar you can write it down you could either just print this out and write on the paper or you could have a paper and write out the note names so that you just to help you and then you're gonna try playing it okay so you can start with the right hand you could there's different ways to approach this you could do the entire song right hand and then tackle the left hand. And that might be a completely different day or another week. Or you could just do four bars of the right hand and then go down to the left hand and figure out what the left hand is. Notice that it's the same thing for the first four bars. It doesn't change. I'm gonna tell you what we're starting on there. So we've got a C, if we look, we've got a C and a G. So that would be two notes at the same time and in the, one of the videos where I talk about doing this and this, and then I also mentioned this, C and G, where we, we have to get used to dropping our hand down. We're kind of setting our position. And trying to play two notes at the same time. We don't want it to be, or we want it to be even and coming down together. La la la, 
La la la. And we're gonna hold it like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's what we have here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. La na na na. One, two, three, four. There we go back to that again. Then you're gonna have to figure out what this is. And we go down to the bottom line. Okay, so this, uh, so I'm just gonna wrap up this video real s soon. But notice we're always looking for patterns in music. Is something to repeat? Is something the same as what we just did? Okay, so when we compare this to this, we, we look at it and we kind of go through and make sure you really check though. Okay, so yeah, this is all da 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 da. That's the same. I think you've probably figured out what song this is by now. Um, and the left hand is the same. Okay, right? This is what the thought process is. The thought process. Looking for patterns or repetition of the melody. Is this the same? This is the same. Is this the same? Yes, it is. Oh, what about this? No, it's not. So this is like, if this is like one half with a with a first ending, the second half with a different ending. Okay. So often that is the case with songs where a lot of the melody repeats, but then you've got a different ending. Like Ode to Joy was like that. You get to the end of the melody line of the first line, it does one thing, and then when you repeat it all again, and then it has a different ending. This is exactly the same as that in terms of the way the melody is laid out and how it has a first end half with a first ending and a second half with a second ending. Okay, and then this, I also explained this, now we can see it written down in the video about left hand playing. So we've got it, I'm just gonna tell you the notes here. We've got an F and a G. And then it resolves down. We've got the same note on top, G. And then it, E below it. Okay, and I explained this in the video, in the other plain video. So you, you can practice this. I think this will give you a lot to work on. You can practice one hand at a time. We can talk about how to do it hands together. Let me see if I lay my phone right on top of my